The recording? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, seven, oh, I'm ready! Hello, and welcome to Pennsylvania's number one news program, Pen15 News. I'm Eric Shun. Today's the day of the year again, folks. Chemistry Day is here, and you can bet your sweet a baby butt cheeks that we're going to be having an interesting topic this What are you do? Reactions. They happen all the time. Sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't. But did you know there are a bunch of different types of reactions? Dick Long is the owner of a sodium fluoride production company called NAF. We came here to ask the best of the best on redox. What is redox? Welcome to my crib. Thanks for having me, Eric. Thanks for being here, Dick. Redox reactions include all the chemical reactions in which atoms of have their oxidation state changed. It is about as simple as calculating the mass of the sun. A single replacement reaction takes place when a single element replaces another element in a polyatomic ion. Eric is a single element, and I am the polyatomic ion. And this is what happens when I lose one of my elements. <laughs> Hello. Double replacement. It's pretty simple. This is what happens whenever you have double replacement. You have elements A and B right here. You have elements C and D right here. What happens is one of them decides, hey, you know, my girlfriend sucks. And the other one decides, hey, my boyfriend sucks. So you know what they do? They switch. Element A goes with element D. Element C goes with element B. Right there. You see that? You see that? Yeah, right there. Yeah. It's very interesting. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, right there. Ah! 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 Right there! It's double replacement in the making! A precipitation reaction occurs when an acid reacts with the base forming a salt in the water. Synthesis, how do you work? Well, I'll tell you. Wait, what the f- A plus B equals C! Right! Wrong! A plus B equals AB! <laughs> so I'm here for the Q&A for Chemistry Day, if you know what I say. I want to go first! <sighs> okay, kid. So, how do you predict the product's decomposition? I'm glad you asked. If you take this wonderful piece of crap and decompose it, you get methane and a leftover piece of wonderful crap that lacks moisture and methane. The more you know. So how did you know it was going to decompose into that? I don't think I thoroughly understood your question, sir. <laughs> Well, how do you predict decomposition is what I'm trying to say. Well, thank you for clarifying! If you think about it, crap, what is it? It's methane, it's carbon, it's food, and it's also... <coughs> it's also... crap with water in it that has ants crawling all over it. So, what you gotta think about it is, if you have crap and you decompose it, it's gonna emit all the methane gas, and you're gonna leave. It's also gonna evaporate all the water, and it's gonna leave behind flies on it <laughs> and crap. That's how. <coughs> that's how it works. <coughs> so, what can you tell me about precipitation reactions? Why aren't you just Mr. Question Pants? If you take two pieces of crap, one that is aqueous, one that is not, and you react them. You get two other pieces of crap, but pieces of crap that have been reacted. The more you know. 
So, how do combustion reactions work? God, am I freaking Google? Yes? Is there anybody else to ask questions other than this person? <sighs> no. Well, giving two substances and a little bit of energy, sponsored by Papacitos, legendary Tex-Mex, it'll combust, giving you carbon dioxide and water. So I heard you can make combustion by dividing by zero. And that concludes our chemistry day. So until next time, keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is.